You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. Hey, Derek. Are Derek. we going to have nicknames for each other each episode? You're great. Oh, you're great. I'm under boob. That's the original. That's the OG. So you're Nev so Nips. Great. I'm under boob. Oh, wait. Really let's good. not give away the studio production value we have here. It's pretty, pretty low. We're <laughs> probably going to sing anyway, so we might as well just use it. That's a good point. I'm... You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. You know who else is great? Yes. Brant Brandt. Tobler's great. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's you're great. First. Yeah. <laughs> Never had two you're people say it. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what we're going day. for. Do you feel I'm, safe? I'm, I'm blushing. I yeah. feel I'm flattered. This is perfect. <laughs> this is, a good this is great. Welcome to the Hug Life Podcast. I'm Monica Nevy. And I'm Mike Coletta. And this is our podcast about <laughs> magic of friendship and positivity. <laughs> Dude, that was better. Uh, I'm trying to do analysis. a find a good like He phrase. always throws like cats or something. Yeah. Like, that's not what what we're like talking that. about do you like cats no i like your phrase about oh thank you <laughs> he's like no i don't like i cats. don't like it why you, are you guys cat guys i'm a cat no. i'm a cat guy monica hates cats yeah, i don't I'm like with cats. you on that that's okay. good good because mm. most people one. team up on two me. to one teamed up against this time <laughs> how, how the tide has turned i had to sleep with chad denix cats one night <laughs> oh, oh, he has cats plural i think it or maybe it was just one just mr tickle it just was so big it felt like two I try to give Chad Denick a shout out on every podcast. Dude, you know what? Let's that's give, great. You know what? We have a segment for that. That's perfect. Oh, oh yeah, that's wow. perfect. I'm, I'm shout out to his cat, him. not to yeah. him. Brant Tobler is our guest today. Very funny comedian. And also, he's got a book coming out. Yeah. An author. How about that? Yeah, I'm excited to read your book, man. So I love the cover it. of it. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I wrote a book, uh, and it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Really? How long did it take you, if like you don't two and mind? two and a half years. Wow. That's so fun. But I'm an idiot, so I had to edit it like 50 times. <laughs> like, uh, it's hard, you know. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I'm not, yeah, it's I dropped out of junior college three times. I'm not a smart guy. You know? But you wrote a book, though. That means but you're I a smart wrote, guy now. I ended up with a book. So, yeah, I wrote it, and uh, it was it was the hardest thing I've ever done, but it's cool. I'm Do very proud of it. you feel, like, fucking amazing once you yeah. finished it? Or are you like, Yeah, yes. now, you know, so it comes out May 22nd, so I'm just counting. When it actually comes out... I have this, I don't even want to say it out loud, but I, I've had this fear the last like three weeks that I wrote this book and then I died before it came oh, out. God. That <laughs> is so nobody, tragic. Oh my God, that's <laughs> nobody, so tragic. I know, but it's, and it's in the process of getting, so it'll be on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and Audible. And I, so I did all that, but I've had just this sick feeling of like, how sick would it be to work so hard for this book and, and then, then to it? pass away and have it be in like transition of not. So I got the pre-orders up like on Kindle and people have ordered them. Uh, the good. Okay. You can so, pre-order it on Kindle? Because yeah. I read off Kindle. I'll pre-order your book. What's well, the book you. called? It's we called Free Roll. Free Roll. Yeah. All right. That's awesome. So, uh, and you can get it on Amazon, which yeah. is perfect. You can get it. People can you guys use our do the banner. Amazon link thing? Yeah. Well, yeah. Put it with the banner. Make you guys some money. <laughs> there you go. And it's a great book. I'm very proud of it. That's so, awesome. That's so I'm exciting. excited to read your we'll book, man. Yeah, Hug Bugs. Check it out on Amazon I love reading comic books. Do you, yeah. want, do you can you give a quick like description of the book like what's oh, it all yeah, about? Yeah, of course. There's a it's there's some comedy in it, but it's a lot it's a lot about my dad. Uh, so my dad was an awful person when I was a kid, and he was like a drug dealer and just beat my mom and was a bad person. And then so we got away from him, and then he went to college, which is what my mom called it, which was actually <laughs> prison. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so I thought he was in college for a long time, and then he got out of college every He's couple like, what years. What school did he go to? Yeah, Jesus. well, my mom said Princeton, <laughs> which I think only because it rhymed with prison, prison. <laughs> which is so absurd. Your mom has a great sense of humor. Yeah. Right? So he, uh, and then he would get out every couple of year on on spring break, and he would come visit us. So then, uh, but luckily, my mom remarried, and we had a great stepdad to teach us like all this stuff that you needed to learn from a dad. And then, um, so my dad. So then, eventually, my mom sat me down and and handed me an envelope full of uh, newspaper clippings, saying my dad, you know, explain what my dad did. Uh. And she said, "Hey, your dad. We're sorry we lied to you, but your dad's in prison, and he'll call tonight, so you, he'll answer any of your questions." And then he called that night, but he was just throwing a fit about, I am remember you're my son, I'll always be your dad. I didn't know what he was talking about. And um, so after I got off the phone, my mom and stepdad set us down and said that uh, they, my stepdad wanted to adopt me and my little oh, brother. That's why and then my macho dad threw a fit about it. So then my macho dad would call every day threatening to kill my stepdad. 
which is funny to me because he was calling collect from jail. <laughs> <laughs> so my stepdad had to pay for his own death threats, which I think <laughs> is funny. Yeah. But you can then, see all these people online. You're like, don't even complain about your yeah. death threats. At least yeah. you don't have to so pay then, for them. Uh, <laughs> and so then my dad starts sending his friends to the house, and, and my mom just decided it was a, not a good idea. So they so he didn't adopt us, and that's the, what I say is the only good thing my dad ever did for me because if my stepdad would have adopted me, I would have started junior high school as Brant Huffendick. Oh. <laughs> which I thought was like the worst name in the world. That is like the my, worst name in the world. My poor little sister's name is H- Haley Huffendick. School? Yeah. Oh, God. So I was, I was about to go to junior no. high with that. So was then, it like H U F F I N D I C K? Like yeah, H U F E N D I C K. That's And that's amazing. My, my poor little sister's had that name. I can't believe she hasn't got married yet. So then. <laughs> She's still, that's really what. Yeah, oh, so, man. Uh, oh. So then she. Uh, so then my Haley. dad like disappeared after that. And then I went to Phoenix. I went to junior college to just try to play basketball because I, I sucked at college. But I, so I went to, I just went there. And then one day I got a letter from my dad out of no, I was, well, I had a girlfriend at the time. And we were, when we'd send letters back and forth because we were super in love. And then one day I just got, <laughs> I got a letter from my dad. Or I got a letter and they handed it to me. I thought it was from my girlfriend. And then I saw a penitentiary in the top left corner in like red ink. And I was like, oh shit. And I put it back down on the table. And I was like, I didn't want to touch it. So I went to dinner that night and then I went to the gym, did my workout and I came home and I was like, I was just hoping it was gone, but it was still on the kitchen table. I walked by it and I, I went to bed and I tried to go to sleep and I was like, I can't. And so I went out and I picked up the letter, went back to my room, locked the door and I opened it real slow. Like my dad was just going to pop out of this letter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and my dad was just like, hey son, you know, I miss you and I love you. And this, this long two page later letter. And then at the end of the letter, he said, uh, I'll be in. I'll be at the Phoenix airport in three days, and I'd love to see you if you want to come see me. You know, and there's no time to write back. I'll just look for you. So I didn't know what to do because my life was going really good, and I hadn't spoke to my dad in about nine years. And uh, but then I just woke up that day. I was like, I got to go see my dad, and I went and I put on my best outfit, Mm -hmm. which is so absurd. Like my dad knew anything (laughs) about fashion, (laughs) even though he's been wearing the same outfit pretty much his whole life. So then I went to the airport, which was like the weirdest uh, moment in my life because. When I got to the airport, and this is before 9-11, so you can go to gates and everything. Mm-hmm. And I got to the airport, I realized I didn't know what my own dad looked like. Oh, wow. Uh. So I was like looking in bars and like bookstores, like, is that my dad? And then I saw a guy in a wife beater, ponytail, like khaki pants. I was like, there's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so I ran over and, you know, gave him a hug and we're both fighting back tears. And I tell him about my life and he's like, uh... and of course in the letter he didn't tell me he was just on a layover. So I'm telling him all this stuff, like, you want to go? Get some? And he's like, oh, no, son, I got to go. I'm... So he's going to Vegas because he had a, his girlfriend was a cocktail waitress in Vegas. So he said, I'm going to Vegas. You, you can come visit me whenever you want. And I was like, okay, cool. And I drove home from the airport. And I called my two best friends back in Wyoming who we kind of bonded growing up on that they didn't have a dad. And uh, I told them the story. And our college spring break was coming up. And they're like, we should go to Vegas. And I was like, Cool. So like a month later, we drove to Vegas and we hung out with my dad for five days in Vegas and we were just mesmerized by how cool it was. We had such a good time and my dad was teaching us about everything and we had a blast. So then at the end of the five days, my dad's like, you guys can come back whenever you want. You can live here in the summer or whatever. He was just living in a trailer, just it's mm-hmm. like white trash you can get, but he's like, you can live. And we were like, so, it was, we were like thank you, you know, that's cool, but we got to go back to college. And then they started to drive me back to Phoenix and every mile we got away from Vegas, we were like, we want to go back. And by the time we got to Phoenix, we were like, fuck it. We're going to drop out of college and move to Vegas. Because <laughs> we wanted to get our dream job, which was to be pirates at the Treasure Island. Because <laughs> they, they the, back then they had the show where these yeah. two pirate ships would fight. And then you'd, I missed that. Yeah. I missed that. I got to Vegas r- like the first time right when that ended. So we were like, this is incredible. And we're like, we just get a dress like pirates, jump off a ship every hour with a bunch of like drunk tourist girls screaming at us. So we told our families we're dropping out. And our, of course, our families were furious with us. And we were like, you know, and we moved to Vegas. And then, of course, we never got the pirate job. We didn't, you know, we're dumb kids from Wyoming. We didn't know about casting or yeah, any of that yeah. shit. So then a couple <laughs> months later, my friends like sober up and realize, you know, this is a mistake. And they... So they go back to Wyoming, and I end up staying because I'm having a good time with my dad, and everything's good. And uh, so I, I stayed it for a little bit, and I was working in a casino, this shitty casino off the strip. And my job, I'd go in at like 11 o'clock at night, 
and pull all the money out of the slots and then count it to like eight in the morning. Just an awful job. Jeez. And I was missing my girlfriend back home. So I told myself, you know, I'm going to save up $1,500 and I'm moving back to Wyoming. And everything's good with my dad. I can come back and see him. So, but at the, but, so I was a really good basketball player when I was young and I just loved basketball. So I, there was only one gym near my house. And it's so hot in Vegas, you had to play indoors. Yeah. So I signed up for this gym, and it was 125 bucks a month to Damn. go to this gym. And this is like, so this is like 18 years ago. So this is the most high end gym. Damn. Had a bar, had everything. <laughs> had and a bar uh, it's like gym. for rich and famous people in Vegas. But I just had this credit card, so I just put it on there. And I so I started going to the gym, and I'd play in this lunchtime game. But it was and the game was full of a bunch of professional uh, <clears throat> professional gamblers, mm. like. Um, like older dudes. So I was by far the best player. And then, so one of the dudes kept trying to get me on his team cause he wanted to win. And then, so I started talking to everybody and I was like, what do you guys all do that? You can just come <laughs> to the gym. Yeah. In the day? And they're like, Oh, we're professional gamblers, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, yeah, that, that guy, he's like the best one. He's like a millionaire. And, and I was like, Holy shit. You know, I never met a millionaire in my life in Wyoming. <laughs> yeah. So I kept getting on his team and we became friends and I kept asking him, I'm like, Hey man, who should I bet? You know, they said, you know, and he's like, don't bet kid, you know, and just save your money. Don't bet. And I, I was like, all right, but I just kept riding him. And then one day I was like, you know, if we win this game, do you tell me who bet? And he's like, all right. And we won the game. And I, and I was like, come on, man, just tell me. He goes, all right, come on. And he took me out of the gym into this secret little hallway. And he says, all right, I'm gonna tell you these four games. Don't tell anybody in the gym what we're betting. Don't tell anybody, but this is our four main bets. And he told him to me, and I was like, okay, cool. And I went home as fast as I could, and I told my dad. I said, Dad, the millionaire guy gave me his secret games. So then I went to the bank, and I pulled out all my money. I was up to like $850. And the bank's like, is there a problem, Mr. Tobler? I was like, no problem. I'll be back with so much <laughs> Don't money. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So my dad, he gets $2,500 in ones from his cocktail waitress. Uh, <laughs> girlfriend oh, and we go and we bet these games that my that the guy told me and uh and of course with the, we lose every single game we lose all our money i have zero oh, no. money my dad loses 2500 his girlfriend's furious she wants to kick us out but we have nowhere to go and so i can't go to wyoming now i'm back to zero so i have to start picking up extra shifts and just trying to make some money so then i couldn't go to the gym for like a month because i had no money to even get to the gym so then when i finally got back to the gym when I walked in, that dude that gave me the game saw me, and he came over, and he's like, hey, man, where you been? I was like, I couldn't come for a while. He's like, did you bet those games that day? And I was like, yeah. He's like, how bad? I was like, it was bad. He's like, how bad? I was like, I lost all my money. And he just laughed right in my face, and he's like, I told you not to bet, kid. And I was like, I know. He goes, if it makes you feel any better, we lost like 850000 that day. Oh, and I was like, no, nah, doesn't make me feel any better at all. You're a millionaire. So he goes, yeah, you know you what? you still had money at the end of he the day. Yeah. At the end of the he said, when we're done, come to lunch with us. So they'd always go to lunch together, and I never got invited before that. And mm -hmm. at the time I was broke, I was like, I'll take a free lunch. So we went to this lunch. And then we order our food, and then I sit down, and he sits down at the table with me, and he just starts asking me all these questions. And I just answered them all. And then at the end, he's like, so what are you going to do? I was like, well, I'm just trying to save up 1500 bucks, and uh, I'm going to go back to Wyoming and be with my girlfriend. And I told him about my job and everything, and he's like, you know what, man? Your job sucks. He's like, you work for me now. And I was like, what do you mean I work for you? I, didn't even know. Like, I was applying for okay. a job. And he would, you know, he put my, his hand on my shoulder he goes, trust me, you want to work for me. And I was like, well, all right, but I was going to go to Wyoming. And he was like, if you get to $1,500 and you want to leave, you can leave at any time. And I was like, okay. And I didn't know what I was doing or anything. So then we all walked outside, and then he's like, what are you doing the rest of the day? I was like, I have nothing to do. He's like, all right, you just go with Tony. And I was like, all right. So then I went with <laughs> – It's never like, a good thing, go with like Tony. A, mo a movie right <laughs> now. <laughs> so I went with, like, his right-hand man, Tony, and then who, I, who was, like, the other super cool guy at the gym, like six foot four, good-looking, charming dude like major league baseball player or just the guy everybody liked and i thought he was the coolest too so he's like come on kid come with me and i was like all right and then we got in a bmw this new bmw and i was like holy shit this is cool because i've never been in a bmw you know so we have like a 20 minute drive down to the strip and then he explains to me he's like so what your job is is you're a runner so you know we'll give you a bunch of money and then you run up and down the strip and you bet on sports what what you're told and I was like, all right. And I didn't really understand it. He's like, I'll train you for the next two weeks. 
and then you'll go. And then the next thing you know, we got to Bally's, and he we park at the valet, and he just hands me twenty two thousand dollars in cash. He says, "Go in there and bet this on Duke football. Take Duke plus thirty four. And I was like, and this is like 2001 when Duke has the worst football team in the country. Mm. And I was like, why would we bet Duke? They're never going to win. And he's like, let me tell you one thing about this job. Just always do what you're told. Never ask, just do what you're told. And I was like, okay. And I went in there. I was scared. My hands were shaking. I had, you know, 11,000 in each pocket. I went up to the counter. I was like, can I have, like, Duke football? And then, so then they gave me the ticket. I was so scared. And then I went out and I gave it to him. And then. So for the next two weeks, he taught me how it worked and taught me where to park and who to talk to and where it's safe because, you know, you have all that money. And then and then so he said, after two weeks, he's like, meet me for lunch tomorrow. You know, I'm buy you lunch. I was like, okay. And I got to lunch, and it was our favorite sandwich spot. And he there was a brown bag on the table. And I, th- I was like, you want me to get my sandwich to go? Because I thought he had already ordered. I thought it was a sandwich in there. He's like, no, nah, hold on, sit down for a sec. Then he just slid this bag across the table, and then I opened it up, and it was like 200000 cash. What? And then he said, this is your money from now on. You're responsible for this money. 365, seven days a week. This is you, so don't, don't fuck it up. I was like, okay. <laughs> and I just look at it like a little kid. So then I'd go to work and I'd bet. So then what happened, they'd give me a Nextel pager thing back then. <laughs> so then it would beep when they would tell me something. So they would say, you know, Seahawks minus four. Walk around, see if you see Seahawks minus four. We're looking for Seahawks minus four. Broncos minus seven and Steelers minus eight, let's say. So I'd walk around and I'd look, but then sometimes something would happen. They go, Steelers, Steelers go, go, go. Or sometimes they just go, Hawks, Seahawks, Seahawks. And that's when I knew something like big was going on. So then I had to run around and try to get those bets. And then the other professional gamblers had other teams of runners on the strip. So I had to beat their runner to the line. So let's say like Seahawks are playing the Cardinals and we find out Carson Palmer gets a DUI or something. There, back then, before Twitter and the internet, there was a 10-minute window where we would, a lot of time, get the information before the casino. So then I would try to run up oh, and oh, bet, bet the Seahawks at uh. minus three, because as soon as the world found out that the Cardinals quarterback is out, it would, it would go up to minus eight, let's say. So if you're taking minus three, it'd be like buying a stock. Yeah. If you bought Apple stock, if somehow I told you, hey, tomorrow they're going to release this new iPhone no one's ever heard of. Go buy the stock right now, and then you'd buy it. That's but then crazy. you would tell it would. So that was my job. So, so then I'd go home at night and I'd have all my money and I'd lock the door. And it was like when you're a kid and you went trick or treating and you'd come home and organize it. I would spell my name in hundred dollars, <laughs> make pyramids, and lay on the shit. It was like a toy, you, you know. And people were like, it, "It's so dirty." I was like, "I don't give a shit. It's cool to just hold two hundred thousand and play with it." So. <laughs> My job's going great, and the guys I work for are awesome. And well, one of the other weird things is so, and I'm hanging out with my dad more less and less because when I got hired, my boss's partner was out of town for like that month, and he came back and he was like, "Okay, let me get this straight." So this kid that lives in a trailer that you found at the gym with fucking no money goes to your most expensive gym in the country, <laughs> and he came here to be a pirate. So they thought I was an FBI plant. Oh. So then for like the first month, pirate. they would take me out every night to dinner. And looking back on it, they were grilling me to see what I was really made of. And then, of course, they realized I was just an idiot. Yeah. And then, <laughs> he really wanted to be a pirate. Yeah, so then we, uh, they're like, what a fucking idiot. Who wants to be a pirate? So then, um, so then everything was cool. And I was working, making a ton of money. So I moved out of the trailer. And I rented this house on the golf course. And I told my dad, hey, move in with me. It's right down the street from your girlfriend's. We could be like father, son. He's like, okay. So he moves in. And then my little brother is like a little stoner kid that like dropped out of high school, followed the Grateful Dead around. Mm-hmm. Just a lovable, sweetheart kid <laughs> that lives in Portland, and he's managing a subway. Has a girlfriend, just living a, yeah. just a hippie life. And he's happy. So I, call, I start calling him. I'm like, Rye, come to Vegas. You know, I got this house. I'm doing good. It's me, you, and dad. You know, we can be this little family like we always wanted. He's like, well, I don't know. I'm doing good up here. I'm like, F- I'm doing good. Come with me. <laughs> so he comes down. I get him a job at this stuffed animal, animal place in the mall and he at Caesar Palace. And he, So everything's good. So then every night we'd sit on the back porch and tell stories, you know, and my dad would tell us about prison and we'd tell him about, like, our life growing up. And we were just, like, bonding like a family, catching up on time. So my dad, but my dad was on parole this whole time. So, and he would always tell us, you know, once I, I, I don't feel like a man, they control me and all this shit. And because he'd have to go do piss tests all the time. And mm, his parole officer was this bitch that he hated. So, 
as a family, me and my dad and brother were counting down the days till he got off parole. Because it's just he would always just be like, when I get off parole, I can be the man I want to be. And me and my little brother, like, yeah, that's what we're rooting for. And then, um, so it, it finally comes the day he gets to his parole's over. So I have a big party at our house, buy a bunch of food, booze, everything, invite family over, friends. We have this great party the whole time. At the end of the night, it's just me and my dad and brother in the kitchen, and we're drunk and all emotional, and we're like, we're so proud of you, Dad. You did it. And, you know, we love you. And then we all went upstairs to bed, and that is the last good memory I have of my father <laughs> because pretty much rest. 36 hours later, he's back on drugs, and he starts hanging out with, like, these little wigger kids that are – so my dad's, like, 40 seven let's say i'm 23 my little brother's 21 he's bringing over like these 20 year old wannabe gangster kids just the worst so you could tell he's back on drugs and now i'm like the dad because now he's going in his room and locking the door with his friends in there and i'm like what's going on in there and it's so it's this awkward awkward thing so and then uh so my birthday comes and my friends from wyoming fly out for my birthday and we have a big party at my house and they're crashing at our house and then all of a sudden, one of my friends' wallet's missing. And I'm like, no way. And I bust into my dad's. I gave my dad the master, even though I was paying for everything, gave him the master bedroom. And I picked the lock, and I go in, and I find my friend's wallet, like, hidden under his bathroom sink. And I'm like, God damn it. And so I had to go. One of the weird conversations is tell my friend, like, hey, I'm sorry, my dad stole your wallet. Yeah. So at that moment, I was like, this is not, shit's going bad. You yeah. know? And then, but I had a lease, and I don't know, you just... Back then, I just didn't want, I was like, I don't know, you just, we, we had come so far, me and my dad were back to good right before that, but I had a feeling something bad was going to happen, and then sure enough, on a Saturday, I'd have to bet college football all day long from like 8 in the morning to 8 at night, and then I'd have to wake up on Sunday and do the same thing for pro football, mm-hmm. so they were long-ass days, so this Saturday, I worked my ass off, came home like 8.30, you know, I see my dad, I'm like, dad, if you want to come down tomorrow and get everything comped. VIP booth, food, drinks, everything for free, watch football. He's like, okay, man, I might do that. And I was like, all right, I'm going to bed because I was exhausted. So I went to sleep, and then at like midnight, 1230, my little brother busts in my room, and he's like, Brant, Brant, wake up. Someone stole my money. And my little brother had saved up like $350 to fly to Portland to see his girlfriend graduate college. So I jump out of bed, I run downstairs, and I'm yelling for my dad because I'm like, one of these little fucking shitty kids stole Ryan's yeah. money. You better get it back. And when I got downstairs, my dad was nowhere to be found. And my dad had this shitty Camaro that he thought was so cool and it always had to be parked in the garage. <laughs> so I went and I looked in the garage and his car was gone. And when I got to the garage, I was like, oh shit, I have all my money upstairs. And I ran upstairs and my dad jacked 80,000 cash from me. What? So me and my little brother took the 350 are just too. crushed. Jesus. Yeah, and that's the exact thing. And I'm crying and my brother's crying. I'm just punching the floor. My brother's trying to console me. And that's what made me sick is like, okay, you stole 80000 from multimillionaires. Obviously, you still put your son in serious danger because I didn't work for guys. Not that there's any job you can be $80,000 short with, but these guys weren't the ones for that. Right. But then to see my little brother, I was like, you had 80000 Why would you steal your own son's $350? So me and my brother are crushed. And then, and I also feel like, shit, my brother's living this great life in Portland. Yeah. And I drag him out of it just to get his heart broken. So I was like, we got to find him. So we went out and drove around all night, tried to find him. We couldn't find my dad. We came home in the morning. I had to call my boss and say I was sick to try to buy a little time because I was supposed to work on foot, NFL Sunday is an important day. So I told him I had food poisoning. I was like, you know, and he's like, well, if you feel better, come in the afternoon. We need you. I was like, okay. I knew I couldn't go with no money, you know. So then I was like, so we tried to find my dad the rest of the day, and then he, we couldn't find him. He came home at like 9 that night, and we were screaming at him, like, where the fuck, where, 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 where's our money? And he's like, I didn't, I don't know what you're talking about. Just denied the whole thing, and we were just start, we were just, we hate you. Why would you do this to us? And then he just turned and just started saying like the most mean things he could. Tell my little brother, like, I don't even know if you're my son. Your mom was such a whore fucking all these railroaders. And I could see my little brother getting upset. And my brother looks like, I mean, it's obvious he's my dad's son. So my dad just being. So I see my little brother all upset. I was like, come on, man, let's go. And we left. And we got in the car. And right when I was driving off, I was like, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. I'm going to kill my dad. I made up in my mind in that moment. I was like, I'm going to kill him. So I came up with a plan. It was obviously a stupid plan. 23 had never killed anybody in my life mm-hmm. and it's before like breaking bad or dexter but now he'd be dead but so one of the back patio times when we were sitting on the back patio 
and having beers. And he was like, when's the one time you really needed me? And I was like, you know what, Dad? When I was like 19, I got an STD and I didn't know what to do. And I was scared to go to the doctor because all my friends said, if you go to the doctor, they put like a whole Q-tip down your dick hole. And I was like... <laughs> <laughs> and that just scared me, right? So yeah, I mean, and it at the time, that's a scary thing. Yeah, <laughs> it scared and, me. <laughs> and at the time, uh, I was a I was a baby. I babysat this kid, and his little sister, or his big sister, I mean, got her wisdom teeth pulled. And um, so my friends are like, "Just take some of her penicillin; hmm. it'll clear up your dick." And I was like, "All right." And I did it, and it cleared up my dick. <laughs> it'll clear up your dick. So then, when I told my dad that story, I thought he would think it was funny. But he like turned like pale like a ghost. I was like, "What's up, Dad?" He was like, "Son, when you were like four years old, the doctor prescribed me penicillin, and I took it not knowing that I was deathly allergic to it, and I almost died." And I was like, "Holy, you know!" And when I told, I just yeah. laughed. I was like, "Well," he's like, "If you were allergic to it, you would have died." I was like, "Well, I didn't. My dick cleared up. You know, right. we're good I'm here yeah. now." <laughs> so yeah, in that moment, then fast forward, I was like, as I was driving off, I was like, "I'm gonna uh, kill this motherfucker." I know just how I'm gonna do it. So. I call my cousin who lives in Phoenix, who's like a real gang member, like the, and the most loyal dude in the world. And I told him what happened, and he's like, "I'll be there in five hours." You know, drove straight from Phoenix up, and he got to the house. He's like, "Where's he at?" I was like, "Hold on, I got a plan." <laughs> he's like, "What's your plan?" I was like, "Just hear me out." And I said, "So this is what we're gonna do." So there was a, there's a Jamba Juice like a mile from my house that my dad mm-hmm. would go to all the time. He loved these mango Jamba juices. So I said, "What we're gonna do is." I'm going to fly to Colorado, be with my girlfriend, because everyone, so it doesn't look like I'm a suspect. I said, no one knows you're here, Cato, my cousin. So what you're going to do is get the Jamba Juice, fill it up with penicillin, pack up all my brother's shit in the car. Then when my dad comes home, give him the Jamba Juice. When he starts drinking it, you guys get in the car, drive to Phoenix. You know, days later, they'll find him dead. I'll be in Colorado. You'll be in Phoenix. Airtight alibi. <laughs> That's what I thought. It's stupid, right? Once again, I'd never killed anybody before. So <laughs> there's a receipt so for a Jamba the, Juice airtight somewhere. Airtight alibi. Yeah, so <laughs> that the name of the episode is Airtight yeah. Alibi. <laughs> so they were like, uh, okay. So I flew to Estes Park and I called my girl. I called him. I'm in a hotel and I, I call him up and I was like, you guys ready? They're like, we're ready to go. Jamba mango Jamba juice in the fridge. We're just waiting for him to come home. I was like, all right, just call me when you know he's dead. They're like, all right. And uh, so I waited like an hour and a half, no phone call. And I, so I call him back. I'm like, what happened? They're like, man, he came home, but he wouldn't take it. He's like, we gave it to him when he came in, but he just set it on the counter. And, and like looking back on it, I get it. My dad was in maximum security prison. At that point, he knew we were enemies. So you're probably not going to take a gift from your enemy. Right. I don't, yeah. He probably thought we peed in it or something. I don't think he would have ever thought we were trying to kill him. But So he just put it on the counter. So I said, I said, you know what, Cato? Just fuck it. Just go to Phoenix. Stick with the plan. I'll come back. Move all our shit out. I'll just never talk to my dad again. My cousin's like, nah. I didn't come here for that shit. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, we do it my way now. I'm like, what do you mean my way? He's like, we do it my way. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, we'll call you back. And just hung oh, up. Shit. Oh, shit. Didn't even tell me what they were going to do. So this is the plan they came up with is, so they knew my dad loved that Camaro so much that it always had to be parked in the garage. So they opened the garage door and then they cut the phone lines and the power lines and then they just waited in the dark corner for my dad to come home. My dad came home just like they thought, parked his car in the garage hit the to the garage door button to get the garage door to shut. It wouldn't shut. So he gets out. He manually closes it and locks it. And then as soon as he locks the door and turns around to walk inside, my cousin and brother jump out with golf clubs and try to kill him with golf clubs in the garage. But the, the mistake they made was it was too dark. So they got him a couple times pretty good, but then they were like, they didn't want to hit each other and <laughs> shit. And the only light, so there was a door that led to the side yard, backyard in the garage. And then on the bottom of that door, there was a little doggy door, that, and that was the only light coming in. So my dad saw that light, and he just put his shoulder down and ran and busted through that door, fell into the backyard, and then jumped over the back wall and ran away on a golf course. <laughs> and i never seen him since that <laughs> day. Since then? Yeah. What? Wow. That's like 17 years ago. That's and then, crazy. And then, of course, later, a year or two later, I tried to rent a house, and they laughed at me. They're like, you can't. We can't rent to you. You have the worst credit score we've ever seen. So, of course, my dad went and stole my identity. Oh, uh, so yeah. now I'm like, Brant Huffendick doesn't sound as bad as Brant credit score 412. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Never get a house or car, you know. So yeah. so then, um, so yeah, that's part of the book. And then, you know, at one point I ran a big crime at the mall. I started what I called the mafia, And I robbed, some, 
I Rob, like, I am so excited yeah. to read your book right now, man. This is great. I don't want to give away a lot of no, them. Yeah. 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 So the mafia, and then I uh, I broke into Mike Tyson's house way before the hangover. <laughs> way, way. And then... Like they wrote and, that uh, movie about you. So, uh, and so there's just stories like that. And then I... So I was in the gambling game doing good, and then I... Uh, I quit gambling, fell in love with this Mormon chick, and, and tried to marry this Mormon girl, <laughs> and then she broke my heart and crushed oh, me. And then, dude, I am. I yeah, am then so I get heartbreak, robbed. The heartbreaks yeah. like sprinkled throughout yeah, yeah. this story. So like, what are these of, girls doing? It's, it's just and ups and downs. You're gonna be like, oh shit, he he made it, and then you're like, oh again, and you're like, <laughs> he battled out of it, and you're like. Oh no! Oh, no, no but now, but and you're like, yeah. So oh, it ends good. Man. But you now know? you're an author. Yeah, <laughs> and now, I know. Now, now you're in book, our living so. room. Yeah. Things are going yeah. well. Yeah, and then it ends. <laughs> and I won't give it away, but it ends pretty big with dead people and millions of dollars missing, and people are like, <gasps> so I'm it's, excited, I'm so man. excited. What's it called again? It's called Free Roll. Free Roll. Free roll. By I'm so excited for May twenty second. You got all our listeners. I'm gonna be honest with you. That was probably one of the best book plugs I've ever heard. Entire life, and I did an audible version too, so you can hear me actually. Oh, it's your voice. That's that, awesome. yeah. that was That's a, a thirty-minute description of the book, and, I, it, yeah. I, and I loved it. That's I loved so every great. minute of yeah, it. I need to slow oh. it down my elevator pitch. It's a long elevator. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a great story. Yeah, uh, so yeah. Time. I say so that's the book pitch. Sorry, that's, a little no, long. But that's great. No, that's fine. I go mean, buy it. There's some stuff I have no problem. Uh, want to do uh, lexical embraces real quick? Sure. All right. Unless we want to plug, we got to plug shows. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah, let's just do the plug. So we have yeah. an Amazon banner on our website, mm-hmm. huglifepodcast.com. Mm-hmm. If you click on that and do your normal shopping, you can go on and get and Brand's buy book. Because at this Tober. point, you yeah. definitely want to buy it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to pre order it right now. <laughs> right. I'll be on the road, uh, monicanevy.com, on my calendar, tour dates and stuff, and then Monica Nevy social media stuff. Mm-hmm. What you ColettaComedy.com is my dates and stuff. You can look at that. Do you what have about a, you? I have one day, uh, May 31st. I'm doing the Aggie Theater in Fort Collins, Colorado. Awesome. Oh, that's I great. So Collins. I'm super excited about that. And oh, then uh, once the book goes, once the book launches, and I'll put together a book tour, but I just wanted to get this done. It's, yeah, been, yeah, man. it's been the hardest thing I've ever that's, done. That's so. So it's like an I'm awesome gonna take accomplishment, probably, though. Yeah, like take a really month is. off. What's probably. your, um, what's your like social media and stuff? And then, so yeah, you can, can just find me, Brant Tobler, uh, B-R-A-N-D-T-T-O-B-L-E-R. Perfect. And if you want to buy a book, you can go to brantsbookstore.com, and that's where I have Brant's books. That's where I have signed books. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you can get that. Well, the hard copy's already sold out, but the paperback, you can, you can buy, and there's, Audible and Kindle on there too. So that's rad. That's awesome. Man. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, I say, do we want to do a quick lexical embrace? No. So we, I mean, yeah. If you so have we can them. well so we can get Brant's lexical embrace in. Oh big yeah. Shout out. Sure. Oh yeah. yeah. It's a big shout out right now. You ready? <laughs> oh yeah. I can give it to whoever I want. You can yeah. give it to whoever you lexical want. Lexical embrace. Ooh, and I think I know who you might give it to. <laughs> I think I already said it though earlier. Yeah. I mean, I, he could get two though. Does he get two? He can get two if he wants it. But you don't have to give it to him. You can give a shout out to anybody Ooh, you want. Anybody to. I want to. Yeah. Do you want to think for a second? Yeah. Um, for a second. Let me think about this. All right. It's hard. That's okay. Let's see whoever the last person texts me. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I am giving a shout out to my manager Ryan Kreppen, who is perfect. He helped me so much with everything, and uh, and I love him to death. And Thank he, you, Ryan. Uh, great. He's Ryan, Andrew Slater's great. manager also. Oh, Ryan, there you go. you're great. And you you. Andrew Slater's been on the podcast. And Andrew too. Slater's great too. It's yeah. a great shout out. That's a That's combo a shout out. Sl- uh, a shout out to Andrew Slater's couch that I'm sleeping <laughs> on oh, yeah. for this week. So <laughs> thank the, you to <laughs> Little Armenia. Thank you to Ryan and Andrew. They, they not have to, helped not me. to b- put on blast where Andrew lives, but right. I do love that neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you his address. It's a big neighborhood. <laughs> uh, um, do you want to do the positive spin? Yeah. Jump right into it. Let's do that. Let's do positive spin. We thought this would be a good positive spin for you. Every episode, we try to spin something that some people may seem as negative or like hard to mm-hmm. handle and i always get a positive spin because all your stories partying with people you don't know uh-huh. like you meet for the first time like what's good about that i'm we terrified f- we think fig- well it made me think of after shows like sometimes you like meet people who want to hang out yeah and th- yeah. Th- half the time i'm like eh, i don't know if i want to do that but sometimes i've had like really good experiences honestly yeah i'd like i mean I don't want to make it sound like business, but that, that's how you got to build a fan base. Yeah. yeah. They just want you to be, I don't, I, I mean, trust me, there's some that are annoying that I just get away from, <laughs> or sometimes they're just not in mm-hmm. it, but I, I mean, it's cool to have, you know, they're usually very complimentary and they're like, and part of it, to be honest, is I was just broke comedian. Yeah, and I was going to say that paper shit. And they were shit. buying like, uh, they'd buy a shot or buy a drink yeah. or they would like, you know, so, but it, it just feels good to, mm-hmm. you know, like you did something, you, it, it always, because I remember so many bad shows, 
when you start out and you have to make that long car ride yeah. home and and you question it so when it goes good i like to you know like to let people in. and I, they just like the people like that you know because yeah. some people think that we're more important than we really are oh yeah oh, yeah so if i do a show in montana they're like i can't believe this guy from la came mm -hmm. i'm like i came because i needed this 200 dollars so, <laughs> <Right. bad. laughs> yeah. so like, i don't, don't in some way i don't want know. to to give away the magic tricks but like so it's i don't know it just it, and it works out good because then they'll come then I always know I can come back, so I just try to be. Yeah, and I just try to be nice to anyone. Anyway, yeah, but, exactly. That's you know. who's definitely going to come back. Like if you have a good show and people like you, maybe they'll come back. Yeah. But if you like hung out with that person afterwards, they're definitely coming yeah. the next time you're there. Well, I went to sure. I went to dinner one time with with Henry Winkler, the the Fonz dude, and they asked him about it. And someone at the table asked him, and he was like, "You know, every person they just want their three seconds yeah. with you, so just give them, make eye contact, talk to them for three seconds." And then you, you've made a connection, and I was like, "Yeah, that's really yeah. good advice." And when I first started comedy, I would never take the free drink because I'm like, "I got to drive," and now I'm like, "I'm always taking that yeah, free yeah. drink." I like, always what is wrong let because like we get free drinks at clubs half yeah, the time, anyways. Yeah, but I always let them buy because then yeah, it helps yeah. the club too, and they they yeah. feel like they're doing a nice thing because they are. I yeah, mean, yeah, so it's all yeah, and that too. When they just want to do it, they feel like. You know, I feel good that they got to buy you a drink. So, <laughs> yeah. and what am I gonna do? Just go back to my hotel room and be right? Have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have it's you like ever had like? Have you ever like gone back to someone's house or not like uh, a yeah. hookup thing? But oh, like, yeah. just, like partying I've, I've with? Done any, everything you can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Which I always say, don't do. But right, I'm sure exactly. You know. I'm always, I mean, I have. I think I've only really had like fine there's been some weird experiences but I'll, i won't go by myself it's yeah, like i'm usually with other comics because or there's uber like, oh, yeah, yeah. that's if there, true if there's no uber back in the days when i started if you ended up somewhere i hate that i mean that's why i think uber is like the best invention ever besides it's so text rad. messages just leaving you because can i can anywhere. leave i hate being i hate you know it's kind of my it was my new year's resolution the other year like if i don't like it just change it yeah don't yeah. sit around in places you don't want to be just just don't do it. it yeah. Just leave. Be happy. You mm -hmm. know. So, but on the road, yeah, I've, I've ended up in some weird spots. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, stay, that sounds like a great idea. And stay like, close oh, to God. the club. That's what they stay close yeah. to the club. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. always trying to get laid too because I've been single forever, and that's the key. And that's what every veteran comedian will tell you: like, don't leave the venue because once you go to another bar, you're just a regular. Right. Dude. You're just a dude yeah. at the club or the bar. You're the guy. But if you even go across the street, you're just a dude. That's true. In right. a that's bar. True. So. Yeah. Stay in the place where you're a hero. That's yeah. A that's a great. And that's if you're not a hero, advice. go to your hotel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I uh, yeah, I've had good. I feel like I. It's usually rich people that like that's their move yeah. you know they're like oh i have a lot of money oh, which is a great cash, you're right yeah. it's like a great person to know you're like yeah i know the rich dude here yeah, in, yeah. In and Montana. if you're there for like a weekend sometimes they'll say hey come do this tomorrow most of the time you're like i'm good but one occasionally mm -hmm. it's like something cool yeah when i hear about that always with people saying yes to it and going is police ride-alongs Oh like yes, if that, yeah. if that oh, happened to me, yeah. I would totally do it. If some, if I was in Fuck a strange yeah. town and they were like, "You want to do a police ride?" I'm like, "Yeah, I would totally. Yeah. I would love to do that." And it depends it's, if I'm with somebody. Tacoma, like three times, <laughs> the headliners, like a cop's been there and just offered it to them. Oh really? Like, yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait, funny. so did you it's get to go? Or just the I did, it was the headliners that got to oh, go, really? and I was like, because I had to, that was when I was working a day job and living in Seattle, so I got oh, so a day job. To go but they, I was like, that's so awesome. That sounds so much fun. Yeah, I like to reap those benefits. Oh yeah. I mean, they don't pay a shit, so when you get the free stuff. I was in Tucson. I got a massage. Yeah. It was a lady. It was, she is like legitimate. Massage. She's like, come tomorrow. I was like, okay. Dude, <laughs> I did a show it was great. in Santa Monica and this lady gave me her card and was like, come over to my place. I'm opening a new massage place if you want a massage. And I was like, if I lived down here, I totally would do that. Right. Really it's such a weird thing. Like, I'm like, only I could here get murdered, but I also could night. have a nice yeah. massage. So yeah. whatever. Yeah, a good massage. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And it worked out. It was very relaxing. That was good. She had some magic yeah. water. Yeah. <laughs> magic <laughs> did, water? Yeah. What's magic water? It was like, it was like love water where she they like got it. It's water that they give to monks and they like chant at the water, like chant love stuff. It. Yeah, and then you drink it later. Did oh. it taste good? Yes. Did it make I mean, you, it didn't taste bad. Did I don't it put know. love in your heart? She was kind of like, I know it's weird, but like, just drink it. <laughs> but you got to try it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I'll try yeah, it. Right. Who would have thought podcast love world. water was in Tucson, Arizona? But, you know. <laughs> I tell people all the time, it's a podcast world now, and I need new podcast stories. So when I'm on the road, I'm trying the magic <laughs> right, water. I'm definitely. Doing, what am I going to think you can? Yeah, I don't want to be uh, a lame. This yeah. is all for work. I said, I make bad choices for work. Because <laughs> that's how you get the it's material. True. If I just I know. play it 
safe. I, that's boring. That's true. Every time I go home, I'm like, this is not a good story. Like this is just. <laughs> and then I just went home after the show. Like that's yeah. Not, mm, that's boring. Okay, I think that's good. I think, I think hang out too. with people you don't know. That's fun. You yeah. never know yeah. who they just could go be. for it, and it'll go. It bad occasionally and that's but they always i mean they told us that in basketball too they were like be nice to all the fans and stuff like that because you never know that when you're done playing the, what yeah, they're, they're going to be able to do for you so yeah. you're always just especially the people who came kept coming back you know like regular fans which yeah. is hard to find in women's basketball so it's like just yes. these older couples that loved us and we're like yeah or kids you know whatever yeah because yeah. um, they can help you later Totally. Yeah. Cool. You want to do the top five turnaround? Yes. So you want to explain it to Brant real quick too? Yes. yes. I pick the top five worst of something. You guys are on a team. We're on a kind team of. Now. You're not like against uh-huh. anybody, yeah. but just We've against been the world on a team together. Hey. <laughs> Late night hotel room. That sounds weird. <laughs> yeah, it, did. it did sound weird. Um, <laughs> you guys got to tell us why it's a good thing. So this is the top five worst things you can do at a stranger's house. Oh, so you're over, you man. made it back to the apartment, right? Maybe you guys are all partying. You do these things. We, you got to tell us why it's a good thing that, that, you, that you did this. Okay, cool. Okay. The first one, uh, going through their stuff, maybe medicine cabinet, whatever. Well, what if you drawers. need something? What if you're like, I need ibuprofen <laughs> right now? And they just, and you know, they're, if it's in your medicine cabinet, I mean, that's cabinet, a good excuse happen. when you get caught, but I don't know if that's a good Me, thing. I'm always like, hey, I need some Tums, like 100% yeah. of the time. And I'd go, and that's a harmless thing to look for, I feel like. Yeah, you're not hurt, but and yeah. the party's going on. Why interrupt the party for something so trivial? Exactly. It's you don't like, want to be a. And they're just going to say going it's through right for no there. reason. Yeah, you know. That's perfect. I always go through medicine cabinets. I'm going to be honest, just does. to look. Right. Yeah, we nailed it. You want to see? I've looked up like what medications are just because I'm like, what is Valtrex? <laughs> oh, this bitch has you herpes. Wanna... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody left her purse at my parents' house once and that was in there and I was like, oh God. Oh, oh no. God. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, okay. But then I could, you can see maybe they're going yeah. through some stuff you didn't know yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> what would I you look nothing. for? What would I look for? Yeah, a party. Yeah, I mean, I don't, Viagra would be it. I don't, do any, <laughs> I don't do any drugs or anything, but that shit's expensive. Right. So yeah. if I saw some of that, I, I wouldn't take it all, but I would take, take one maybe. <laughs> See how, just, just take it. But I don't know anything about medicine. Get. Like I take zero, I take one pill in my life, and that's Viagra. Well, I take my gout medicine in the morning. So if you went, <laughs> if you went through my cabinet, you'd be like, what are these pills? And there's like a hundred of them, but they're just for gout. I don't yeah, think they yeah. would do anything to right. you. I mean, now with the internet, you know, you can look up what they are. So yeah. yeah. And you'd be super Never dis- stolen anything you just you'd be disappointed you'd be like mm. <laughs> <laughs> you could get but i know I people know. that do that for sure i mean i have friends that have we've been leaving parties like dude i got these i was like where did you get these you just take them out of the thing take well, that's why you don't let random people in your house yeah, that's right you that's know, like some house parties right. with friends i also yeah. never keep my drugs yeah. in the you know in the mirror or whatever i got I was keeping so my incredibly lucky in college then Throwing house parties and stuff at my apartment and no one ever stealing anything. Now that I think about it, you probably just didn't know. We did that in high school. Because I now I sometimes I'm like, what happened to my favorite shorts? What happened to that hat? I like someone had to. Someone I couldn't have just it. lost all. Like of those it. parties you were saying you had at your big house in Vegas. That's yeah. probably like people probably just took shit. You wouldn't even remember. Well, you know what's funny? When I did the backyard shows at my house, everyone was worried about that. They're like, you're just gonna let 250 people in your house? And I was like, yeah, whatever. But they couldn't have been nicer. Yeah. They all brought gifts and yeah. they were helping clean up. And well, that's, that's like awesome. it's like your fun. friends at Jackie more than your yeah. Right. Like random people were. Well, they're so like, I know exactly where he keeps yeah. this. That's what, like, isn't that what they always say? The cops are always like, if your house gets broken into while you're gone, it's people that usually know oh, you're gone. Like, it's almost yeah. almost it's people like acquaintances that. Well, you, you know, know how ballsy it is just to walk into some of these house that you don't know. You mm-hmm. have no, no idea what's in there if they're not there. Yeah, it's and they, always the and they take I'm always worried if I go to a stuff. party, I'm like, oh, no one knows me. So if they're like, you have to leave, I'd be like, all right, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I can just get yeah, out of here. Know. I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> out of that stage going to know. random parties. <laughs> okay. All right, number two, inviting more people over that they don't know. So you're like, oh, I brought all my friends with me. Why, I, the positive spin is what we're supposed to do on this? Yeah. <laughs> well, this more is easy merrier. for us. If it's if you're bringing girls, no one will ever be mad. <laughs> it's true. You know, you but if, I don't over. want more dudes. Yeah. <laughs> that's just competition. Yeah, I gotta be honest. I just don't. Like, there's that's girls. like a weird thing. I've had arguments with people before. I was like, for, why would you like? And we were supposed to go to this like uh, the Adam Levine dude is having a party. Oh yeah, for like a Christmas party, and then we were on the list, and then they t- and then he took us off. Someone else put us on the list, and he took us off. 
And then my buddy was like, that's pretty fucked up. He did that. I was like, it wasn't at all. <laughs> right. Why does he want more dudes there? And secondly, we're dudes that he doesn't know. Right, if he didn't If he's know. doing something shady, who's to say I'm not just going to take a picture of it and sell yeah. it? Like, you don't ever want dudes in there. And, yeah. and girls could easily do that too, but guys are just dumb hey, and they this, just let the guard down like yeah more girls all the way there's one lesson you should take from this podcast is don't bring more dudes to don't your party don't bring more yeah. dudes to your party unless yeah. you get the okay well, that's yeah. it. unless it's a dude party <laughs> it's just all dudes dude parties? but that's another thing as I get older like I'm only friends with comedians really anymore and then people will be like oh I got this dude you're gonna love him I'm like I'm probably, probably good not on dudes, yeah. Man. <laughs> yeah. yeah anytime I'm a girl's okay. like oh no I got this friend he's really cool you're gonna like him and I'm like I mean, occasionally it works but most of the time I'm like I don't I meet my dude friends mm-hmm. from my dudes not I don't do dude referrals that much so. dude, yeah. referrals. dude referrals maybe I mean, this no, episode no. might be called dude referrals there's now. so many <laughs> names that's great so if it's girls that's good it's always good to add more girls I don't know it usually goes good right uh, number three critiquing their house walk in and you're like wow you shouldn't put that there or I don't like what you've done with the place <laughs> Well, maybe if it's really horrendous, they need to know. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, maybe, maybe you're doing. Maybe they're favor. colorblind too, and well, they didn't know that that shit didn't that match. That would happen yeah. to me if I had a house. That's what would happen. <laughs> I wouldn't know how bad that looked. Mine's or maybe if deficient. it's a good idea, and you could just add something like maybe if you put the TV over there. But I still <gasps> a think suggestion, like a kind. It's not going to go over too good. <laughs> yeah, right. I wouldn't yeah. really want if you brought dudes to my house that were critiquing my shit. <laughs> <and you're> like, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is and the worst. Like, oh my Thank you so much for saying that because now you have to leave. Yeah. <laughs> this is the worst party ever. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah, I don't. You gotta go. I know people that do. That doesn't go over too well. <laughs> Criticism of someone else's house. No, no, no. Ooh, everything's great except this couch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Why would you put that there? <laughs> right. Who's that lady? That picture. Oh, it's grandma. Oh. <laughs> Uh, you should get better art. That's my family. Um, yeah. Okay. yeah. Who drew that? Your nephew? Oh, no, that's my dad's picture. Like, oh, okay. Ooh, it looks great. Oh. Uh, all right. Number four, staying too long, overstaying your welcome. Well, I think, okay, there's a certain amount that's staying too long, and sometimes people just need to sober up. You yeah, just got to let them chill. Mm, you know, that's why it would be okay. If I, I would do that if I really had to sober up, and I'd tell them, though, I'd be like, hey, I know this is late. <laughs> You're the only one left. And be like, I know I, I'm. I know I'm, I'm holding drunk. your tums, and it's four o'clock in the morning. But <laughs> I like, need did to, you go through my medicine? I cabinet? need to sober up a little bit. I also took eight Viagra. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're never going to go to sleep. I can't drive. <laughs> I'm, uh, I want to wait to see if I can use my boner to drive my car home. <laughs> yeah, I never know what this. St- you never know when the staying too long is really. Right. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's I always you, a drop off where like a few people leave, and then everybody's like, "Oh, should we should go." And then yeah. you're just like the last one. You're like, oh. It's never really a time thing, too, because sometimes parties well, can once go again, late. Yeah. I'm just going to say how shitty dudes are on us this time. Because I've been to many parties when a dude's trying to hook up with a chick. Uh, and, they and then if that me. chick, even if he realizes he doesn't have a shot, he's like, all right, party's over. <laughs> or with, if she goes to another dude and then he gets all... Oh. Well, that dude's not going to fuck the girl I like in my spare bedroom. Everybody out. So. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Dudes, it can, it can be pouty sometimes. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been homeless for two and a half years. I have no house <laughs> stories for you guys. <laughs> I've been on the roads. So I have on nothing. The road, but on the road, great. writing books. I was, I was <laughs> talking about myself. I mean, <laughs> you live in a traveling author's life. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's real. <laughs> it's real. It's been, that's why I, can't I hope this book does good. I'd like to change my <laughs> traveling yeah. author's life a little bit. <laughs> okay. And number five, leaving a mess. You made a mess in somebody else's house. Well, some people want to clean up. <laughs> the whole, stay with me. I'm, stay I'm with, with me. I'm, I'm with you. Because some people like don't like it goes back to number one. Like if you go to try to like look through their house trying to find out where your extra trash bag, they're like, what are you looking through my stuff for? So they're like, just let me clean it up. Like, and some people also really want to be a good host. Like they're obsessed with being a good host. And, and they're like, like don't I'll make you look good. Yeah, by I letting will, you clean. I my will show. clean up. Because that's what a good host does, and I'm hosting this party, and I want to do everything that entails. <laughs> I actually loved a house party, like cleaning up while the party was going, like at the same time throwing shit away, <laughs> you know, just to keep up with it. And then you wake up in the morning, like it's not bad that's at true. all. That's true. That is See, a good. Yeah, I'm the opposite. I like great... doing it at the next day. Next day, I like a and then group effort. Like you the next morning. That's what I it like. is fun. Like, next we day did it. Where you see how many cans you have, just like how many garbage cans you filled up with garbage cans, cans. Garbage cans filled garbage up with cans. Forget, yeah. Cans and cans. You guys tell I meant to say garbage cans there and try to save it. You guys tell it. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. So you want to allow them to clean up? Yeah. Right? Let, okay. if they, yeah. I, mean, I, I guess it's not a bad thing ever, but you should ask first. You know, some people don't want to. Sure. I've yeah. left a mess 
when it was like the host's idea though of like really good party when you pour beer on each other or something crazy like oh, a, yeah. some of your team wins and they kind of encouraged the mess and then i was all about that mess or you're at a party at someone's yeah, you're at a party at someone's house you don't like and you just want to leave yeah. a mess and well, it yeah, makes you feel good that's, that's true. True. about you feeling good yeah mm-hmm. yeah that's right you gotta <laughs> treat yourself treat yourself to <laughs> ruining that person's house <laughs> yeah the first time i got drunk i left a mess because i didn't know how to be a drunk guy and i sat on the toilet and puked in the tub <laughs> Which is just the worst thing I ever. I didn't know how to be a drunk guy. That's, That's a good comment. Like, why not? And they were so mad at me. Like, why not just puke in the toilet? I, like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, like, I just wanted oh, to rest. Sorry. I Leave wanted to be alone. in a sit-down position. My head hurts. Leave me alone. <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Oh, I was at a solid, house party on New Year's effort. when I was 18. And uh, I like was in this person's bathroom throwing up for three hours. And I felt so bad because no one could pee. <laughs> like, I'm like, I'm like, this oh, is yeah, the bathroom. I'm taking it up. My bad. Everyone's like, we got to go outside. Yeah. That's bad. It is bad. I felt like a real ding-dong that party but i was new i was new to the drink See, i was like 18 what about what what's not new? on your list is it okay to shit at people's houses <laughs> it wasn't on that list yeah i don't i think because i'm i have to if you have to you have to i avoid like, i try to I avoid like the it, longer the party is like you know that's gonna happen i just have, I have it is a really bad body. thing for me too where i'm like <laughs> i will if it's a dude i don't care but uh-huh. if it's a girl i'm like we got to find a mcdonald's stand oh, <laughs> I have it's a nice weird body where it's like a shot clock when it's go time. Like, it could happen <laughs> right now. If I just hopped up, you'd be like, got 30 oh, he's seconds. Going, it really, it is really scary. The bench live. is screaming five. <laughs> yeah. four, Every three. time you shit your pants, you call it a shot clock violation. Yeah, I call it a fucking it's a shit clock I'm violation. in my late thirties. This is embarrassing that I keep shitting my pants. <laughs> oh man. Stupid that balls. was good. That was great. Good work team. <laughs> We got uh, quiz time? Yep, we quiz time. time. Uh, which one do you want to do? I think we should do the Let's build a house. Oh. Okay. Or do you want to do the pizza, uh, the uh, the meals? Let's do meals. I was thinking the meal one just yeah, for the me- answer. Yeah, meals is good. So this one. Do a stupid internet quiz. Yeah, we do a stupid so buzzing quiz. So this one is choose six different meals and we'll tell you which Chris Pratt character you are. <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. Do you like cool. Chris oh, I Pratt? I love Chris Pratt. I do too. I love he's him. Such a, he's, he's, he's awesome. He is yeah. awesome. He so, was on the podcast before, right? Oh, yeah. He's, yeah. he's, a, he's a future he's guest. He's from he's, Washington. He's, he's, yeah. We've been really kind of too busy for him. So oh, yeah. like we've been holding his so interview he told off. Me that last time. Yeah, he's, he's okay <laughs> with it though. Uh, <laughs> pick a breakfast and I'll just ask you and you'll fill it for you. Fruit smoothie, eggs and toast, waffles, or acai. Bowl. Look at that pronunciation. Ooh, uh, <laughs> wait, what, am I just supposed to pick what I would want? Pick what? Yeah, pick yeah. whatever one you want. Oh, or I would like you? the acai bowl. Acai Ooh. bowl. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna pick waffles. Oh, oh. I will go eggs and toast just because I can't have it. Oh, okay. <laughs> pick a morning snack, and you got almonds, apples, protein bar, or donuts. Ooh. Ooh, I'm trying to be healthier in the one seven. I'm gonna go with the apples. Apples. That's a good. That's a good one. I'm gonna go. Uh, I think I'm going to go I'm donuts. donuts <laughs> I'm going to go donuts. Almonds. I love almonds. All right. I do like almonds. <laughs> so you want apples. I want donuts. Mm. I want almonds. Pick a lunch. You got salad, pizza, a burger, or sushi. Ooh, I'm going to pick sushi. You like sushi? That salad looks amazing. I'm going to pick. You normally you, don't have go, good pictures. Are you going salad? Yeah. I'm going to go pizza, I think. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm going to go pizza. <laughs> and then pick an afternoon snack. Yogurt. A peanut butter and jelly sandwich, potato chips, or veggies. And it had roasted veggies, but I'm sure you can have them any way you like, Brant. It's up to you. Ooh, I don't I hate veggies. <laughs> <laughs> like any way, any way you uh, give them to I me. Would like the, I would like the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, please. That's a good That's a good choice. <laughs> you said it like your mom's offering you. Yeah. I'll have mm-hmm. peanut butter and jelly, please. Thank you. I will go veggies, dog. I think I'm going to go peanut oh. butter and jelly, too, actually. <laughs> You're picking the worst stuff ever. What is it? <laughs> that's how I eat. Oh. Sorry. All right. Um, Brant? Yes. Pick a dinner, and your Ooh. choices are steak, pasta, ramen, or fish. And I don't know why I can't pronounce pasta, but pasta? it's steak or pasta or ramen. Or fish. I would love steak, please. Steak mm. is good. Yes. Monica, what do you choose? The worst one. Pasta. Is that and the worst one? Not bad. Those are all pretty good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I think I'm also going to go pasta. But I had smoked salmon for breakfast. Oh, I love salmon. Thank you. <laughs> Pick a dessert, Brant. Ooh. And you can't you can't <laughs> look because I gotta see which one it is and surprise for you. Okay. So your choices for dessert. Oh, I'm so excited. Are yes. Cake, ice cream, chocolate, or pie. Cake, ice cream, chocolate, chocolate, or pie. And the chocolate pie. looks kind of truffly. Yeah. Like Does a, it say what kind of pie? Uh, it just has a pie in general, so it could be any pie you want. Brilliant. 
The I'm world is go. your pie oyster. Pie I'm going to go with ice pie. cream. You're going to go with ice cream? <laughs> yes. Mm. Please. I think I'm going to go pie. I've been in a pie mood lately. I'm going to go ice cream. You go ice cream? Okay. I don't even know. Wait. I don't even know what movie this is from. Ooh. Maybe. Well, I'm I excited do? for what uh, for what you got. What did I get? I, well, I'm going to tell mine first, and then you're going to okay. you're last because you're the guest. Sorry, we're doing that. <laughs> it's too excited. I don't mean to, I don't mean <laughs> to get you all uh, amped yeah. up, but I got Andy <laughs> Dwyer. Okay. You are the doofiest, silliest, most lovable Chris Pratt. You do everything with the same wonder and excitement of a sugar high toddler. That's accurate. You Wait, might not always. <laughs> it's from that's the, from uh, Parks and Rec. Yeah, from Parks and Rec. Oh, you yeah, might not always know one. what you're doing, but you know you're doing it well. It's pretty accurate for yeah. you. Yeah, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. Pretty sugar high toddler. Michael, I got what did you get? Owen Grady from I don't know. What is he wearing? He's on a motorcycle in like a. That's from Jurassic World. Okay, Jurassic. Yeah. But that's what I thought it might be, but I haven't seen it. Your dinosaur. So you you're the sexy, it? confident dinosaur whispering Chris Pratt. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> you know, never to judge a book by its cover or a dinosaur by its teeth. You know that family extends beyond just blood, and you would trust your friends with your life. Yeah. You ready for this? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> you got Emmett Brikowski from Lego Movie. Oh, oh wow. wow. Yeah, you're the most hardworking, dedicated, oh, animated, so literally, <laughs> Chris Pratt. You like to do things by the book. You just wrote a book. But you're also <laughs> spilling with creative energy. You're also eager to meet new people, make new friends, and watch TV together on your double-decker couch. Emmett. Hmm? That's Everybody nice, though. You, you like Emmett. to meet new people. Yeah. I feel like it kind of got you. But some of it was way wrong. Like the hardworking part? Is hardworking. That that? Follow the book. <laughs> I hate, yeah. I, I hate Follow rules so yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> You That's cut. cool. Yeah. I don't, the Lego guy. You're the Lego guy. You're Emmett, everybody's favorite. Don't mm-hmm. worry. You're, You're a master builder is what this movie was called. Did you, if you guys have seen the Lego movie, it's really good. Is it good? It's I've really good. It it's multiple like, times. It's good. Like Surprisingly, you didn't know it was going to be good. And I was like, this is amazing. I gotta, I it is really good. I saw movies. Lego Batman also. So. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. Mm-hmm. Big ding dong. <laughs> uh, should we positive spin someone's life real quick? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, so we positive. We, it's a life spin. We uh-huh. take some. Well, someone sends us a problem, and we spin oh, it positive cool. for them about their life. Yeah. Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. This one is from Adam. Uh, he Adam who? <laughs> do we say? <laughs> no, oh, okay. no, we can't. We can't. <laughs> just, I just oh, sorry, Adam. We'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to put Adam on blast. <laughs> goes to his favorite pizza place, right? That he goes to all the time with his husband. And the guy behind the counter will not acknowledge that they are married. He'll just be like, are you guys separate? And they're like, no, we're together. And he's like, wait, how do you know each other? And they're like, we're married. And he's like, okay, so are you guys separate? Like, he just <laughs> wouldn't do it. What? And so he messaged us and he was just like really mad about it. He's like, I don't even know how to feel about that. And it's like he goes to this pizza place all the time. Here's, and it's on Capitol well, Hill. Here's the right? first thing I thought is a positive spin. You instantly know you're a better person than that guy behind the counter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and no matter who you are. You know you're a better person. And also, there's a lot of pizza options out there, and I'm sure there's one that will be even better than could expand one. his pizza. You could pizza. expand his pizza options. <laughs> his pizza options. I want to know what restaurant it is, though, too, because I know most of the pizza places on Capitol Hill. Yeah, that's awful. By location and place. I'm trying to think. They live farther down the hill now, so I don't know. Oh. I would... I, uh, this isn't really positive, though. It's okay. I would just get my pizza and drop it on the floor until he got it right. <laughs> And I'd go, oops. You'd be like, call him my you know husband. What? That's a positive <laughs> Then I would just solution. slip and then I would just have it flop on the floor and go, oh, crap, we'll be back tomorrow. And I go, oh, no, we're together. You guys, oh, you're separate? And I go, oh, no, we're together. Boop. <laughs> and then eventually, That's a great answer. he's going to be like, or I would just go full in love right in front of him. Oh, oh yeah. Would just feed the pizza yeah. to my partner right in his mouth. That's Lady in the tramp, the crust. Yeah, just, you know? just right. At the, but not even go to your table. Just do it. Just, just right in front the of the counter. register. And just go, no, I'm, I'm with him and just feed it right Make in Make eye mouth. contact. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's great. That's, That's a great. really good solution, Brant. You're really <laughs> good at this. Wow. And you'll probably get kicked out and never get to go there. Again, right? <laughs> but you know what? You'll get Screw your revenge. Screw that place. Yeah, I mean, fuck it. You don't want to go there anyway. <laughs> what is it? 1984? Yeah. Come on, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Pull your head out, pizza guy. You're not great. Get mm-hmm. a bad Yelp review from me. Ooh, that's yeah. a good Tell us the place so we can give it a bad Yelp review, Adam. <laughs> I'm sorry, Adam. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's nice. You hope we still fix. I didn't think that'd be in Seattle. Yeah, I thought like that'd be, be nicer. Up. That's Everyone's what I thought more... too. Yeah. Mm. There's guys that are pretending to be hipsters on Capitol Hill, but really they're bigots. You know. Oh, like is everywhere. That thing? Yeah, they're trying to, they want to be that cool guy, but they're still assholes. Oh. Deep down, can't change it. It's in their heart. <laughs> Just mm-hmm. deep down. Yeah. Dickheads. All right. 
Well, that was well, solid. Okay, charity time? We yep, we do charities at the end <coughs> where we say ch- we recommend a charity to people. Oh, okay. So if you have a ch- Monica's going to do hers, but if you can think of one. Yeah, can I try to find yeah, one? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you absolutely. Can find one. Uh, this one, I figured we'd do literacy because then people can read your book. Uh, <laughs> <I> love it. <laughs> we've done this one before, but Children's Literacy Initiative is a good one. That's CLI.org. And I found this because I felt like I wanted to reach across the aisles a little bit. There's a Barbara Bush Foundation for Family Literacy that is rated really high amongst charities, and it's just barbarabush.org. Barbarabush.org. Yeah, saying we should read together as a fam. Well, yeah, read my book together. There you read go. Brand, <laughs> read popcorn <my> read <laughs> Brant's book. <laughs> Families. As a family. Uh, is it my turn? Or yeah. can it not be? Can I oh. have one more second? Yeah, you can have one more second. You can have one more second. You go for it. Also, we mentioned it last week too, uh, or one of the last podcasts. Um, that oh yeah. Uh, don't forget, you can just if you have extra books, donate them to like troops or prison libraries right. or something like that. Yeah. Don't try to sell them back. Just donate them somewhere. They're worth a, a dollar. Share it with yeah, a friend. Yeah, share it with, or give it to someone you know doesn't have a lot of access to books. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll start one of those uh, old lady libraries in front of your yeah. house. Oh, dude, those are fun. Where you can switch books. The free, is that what free libraries. You yeah, just when you take put and give it back, or do you, do you switch books in there? I don't yeah. know how it works. That's how you do it. That's right. You nailed it. Thank you. I, I like don't know it. if it's called an old lady library, but that's close <laughs> enough. Yeah. Uh, an old lady that lives alone library. <laughs> that's what I would assume. Nope. Okay. I'm going to make one <laughs> <laughs> for our neighbor kids. You got it? Um, oh, I'm just going to do a simple children's hospital one. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Because I like what Jimmy Kimmel said, and it was. One of my best friends is Jimmy's little sister, so I was monitoring that before he talked about it. So she was sending me pictures every day, worried sick about him, mm-hmm. and then I thought what he said was awesome. Mm-hmm. And I just love kids, so he's 100% right. We yeah. got to take care of these kids. Yeah. I get really excited at any time an athlete donates or goes to children's hospitals, too. Because it's like, That's hey. That's a great Chris Pratt fucking does that. Chris yeah. Pratt did it. He dressed up as Star-Lord yep. and went with <laughs> yeah, Chris yeah. Evans. Yep. Oh, those Chris's. They're so nice they in the Marvel Universe. Nice boys. Chris Russell Wilson Chris goes Russell a lot. Wilson. Chris Russell Wilson. <laughs> Chris Russell Wilson. <laughs> he goes there more than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He goes there like every Tuesday, I yeah. think, right? It's nuts. It's awesome. I, I love... It's what you should do. Yeah. That's great. Who doesn't That's love our Seattle one. Seahawks? Oh, wait, a lot of people. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being on Thank you guys so much Brand. for letting me be on. It's so awesome. It was yeah, fun. So. Amazing. Yeah, it'll Very be fun. Mm-hmm. You guys check out Brant's book. Free Roll. Get it. And uh, go see him do comedy, too. He's a very, very comes, funny it, person. It, and it comes out uh, May 22nd? May 22nd. All right. Or you can get it from me right now, Brant's Books. Brant's Books. Yep. But use the Amazon link and hook yeah. you guys up. Thank yeah. you, man. All right. We got to go because I got a shot clock violation coming up. Oh, no. Bye.